All right. How's my audio? Can you blah, 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 blah? Okay. It looks like the level is okay. It's actually been a while, so let me adjust all of my stuff here. My in frame. Uh, you don't really need to see me. I cut off my forehead. Um, <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Uzaris and John Yu. Let me actually, let me get my, eh, move my chat over here. Okay. I can see uh, Mike Mant. Thank you for showing up. And we'll get started at six o'clock. Um, so I did a I did a meeting note the other day that was interesting. So I'm gonna recreate that real fast in ZBrush. Uh, first though, I need to go in here and texture import, and I always gotta bring in reference. Uh, I don't always have to do that, but it'll be interesting and useful in this case, I think. Uh, and we need to go to my streaming folder, and I'm gonna grab. Hmm. Something that has that's a pretty straight on shot of this thing. I think this oh this one might actually work really well. I'm gonna add this to my spotlight. Um so real quick, let's see how fast we can go through here and uh pop this up here. Oh of course, thank you. Thanks for the kind words. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to give this a shot. It shouldn't be too hard. It's basically a, a dome cylinder on two sides. One's a little flatter. Uh, meat with some noise in it. Cheese. We can use cloth dynamics. Sculpt a little bit of a face. Put that in there. Add some bars. I think we'll I think we'll be okay. So I'm um, again. I have spotlight open. That's Z on your keyboard. We're gonna take this opacity down. Boy, I'm rusty, and my fingers are cold. Okay, so. Let's start with a cylinder. Uh, so I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna grab a cylinder 3D, drag it on canvas, go into edit mode, and I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna just go over here to skin shader four and turn on polyframe. So uh, by default, this has 32 spans, which I suppose is okay. I think that's probably fine, uh, but I don't need all those extra edges. So I'm gonna go down here to V divide and drop that down and then go in here to make poly mesh 3D so I can get out of that initialized state. And then this will be, <clears throat> actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and make this our, top part of our Big Mac here. And then I'm gonna go in here to Subtool. We're gonna to duplicate this off and I'm gonna move this on up and this will be the bottom part of our bun. And just where it starts to curve, which is about there, I'm gonna hold down Control Shift, grab that top layer here, Control Shift drag, Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden. And that's for y'all, Geometry Modified Topology Delete Hidden. And then we're gonna go Z Modeler Brush, BZM on your keyboard, B, Z, M, hover over an edge, close, convex hole, click and drag, and then you can just kind of round out this top and batch that little top bun. Uh, for the bottom bun, I'm going to alt tap this meat here. Actually, let's do one more thing before we get too heavy in here. I'm gonna go ahead and again, put this here. Uh, this, this image is pretty much as straight on as you could ever really want it. But if you need to, you can hit Z on your keyboard, go in here to rotate or scale or do anything you need to to the image. And then when we have this all set up, I'm gonna go in here. Uh, if I was gonna use multiple references, which I don't know that I'll have to do for this, it's pretty simple. Um, oh, they also got little pickles and stuff too, I didn't notice. Hmm. Look at that. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Oh yeah, if I was gonna use multiple references, you can go in here to Z plugin. Uh, there's a ref switcher download you can buy uh, that'll go through and switch a reference, which is really nice. But in this case, I think I just need to use one. But anyway, we duplicated this bottom burger here. So I'm gonna hit, um, oh, we didn't duplicate it. We can hold down control and drag out a copy, or I can just duplicate the whole thing and then move this down, which I'm gonna do because I think this one's a little bit different. And then we'll go ahead and scale this just a bit like so. And then I'm gonna duplicate this uh, bottom burger here, and we're gonna move this down again. This is gonna be the bottom of our bun down here. Again, right where it starts to curve. This one's a little bit different, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down Control, Alt, which is gonna mask that bottom one. I'm gonna go to Unmash Mesh Center, that little teardrop shape. I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna hold down Alt and scale it along that Y axis, and kind of just move this into place. And again, just kind of match that that slope there, and then control drag to unmask, BZM to go back into Z Modeler Brush, or you can assign a hotkey to it, that's what I do. And then you go in here to insert, multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, click and drag, and I'm just gonna round it out like that. And in fact, eh, I don't think it matters too much, but if you needed to, you could also hold down control alt, and then just kind of pull 
these down just a tad. Um, and there we go. Uh, we also have a cylinder right down the middle of his head, which looks like that's where you used to, you would kind of go in the bottom back here up a little gross ladder. And then on the inside, you would go up that ladder and then I'm trying to see if there's a shot of like, yeah. And then you would climb up and then there would be an opening right here. You could climb out and then you would be behind bars because <laughs> it's an officer Big Mac, I suppose. Um, Big Mavlovich, yes. We'll, we'll, uh, oh man, you imagine my face on this thing? You might be onto something. Uh, you explain what the brush modifier button does. Oh, uh, over here underneath. So brush. This one right here, uh, it kind of depends on what brush you're using. It Technically, it adds a secondary effect to your brush. There are two possible effects depending on which brush is selected. Um, standard brush, uh, so if you have it on the standard brush, it'll kind of pinch um, or inflate depending on if it's a pot of a negative value. Um, looks like for all the other ones, axis elevation, how much elevation the brush will add if positive or subtractive negative. So long story short, that's brush modifier. That's not exactly true for all brushes. I'm trying to remember I think for all sculpting brushes, that might be true, but um, there are other brushes where that brush modifier does some stuff. Whew, my brain. I did not get a great sleep last night, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, you best relief really to place your face on it. Perfect. Easy. I'll have to, uh, well, I'd have to sculpt it in order to do a bar relief. Hmm. Have I sculpted my face before? I don't think I have. Let's drop a cylinder in the middle, and honestly, I can keep using this burger cylinder. This is really paying off, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Um, again, and when I say I'm gonna scale, hold down Alt and scale on this Y-axis, what I'm doing is if I just do a scale non-uniformly, it'll shrink it like this, or I can do a uniform scale, and it does this, but I can also hold down Alt, and that's going to solo mode so you can see what I'm doing. I can hold down Alt and just scale along uh, that axis, so it'll leave the, the other axes alone. Uh, so while I'm doing that, I'm gonna, oh, I forgot the, Duh. This is what I was doing. So we got this all set up. I'm going to go in here to movie timeline uh, show because we're not using rough switcher. I'm just going to tap a little dot in here. So now if I'm over here sculpting, I can use my arrow keys forward and back to hop back into place. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. So anyway, uh, again, I'm going to go into solo mode here, hit W. I'm just going to scale, alt scale along that axis here. Um, I'm probably going to leave that alone, but I'm going to put this all the way through. Hmm, maybe down into here. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate this off. And then I'll move this down. Oops, unmask. Moved all of this down, and I'm just going to scale this out. This one I'm not holding down Alt because I do want to literally scale in that direction. Then I'll hold down Alt and widen it just a bit. All right, I think we're good. Um, now, there is going to be a little bit of nuance to this. If we look inside here, I don't know how e exact I want to get, but see how it's like, this is all just kind of a big mold and then it kind of just scoops down. So we can get this all set up and then I think I could just run a Boolean on here and just kind of knock this down and then that same thing for the ceiling and then just kind of put that canister in there. So, eh, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I suppose I should pull up my reference too. This is my meeting note. It's not really my reference, but. Oh, Photoshop, what are you doing over there? There we go. So there we go, it's something like this. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out of solo mode. We've got everything pretty much set up. Uh, I just got a couple more cylinders to make and uh, We'll be okay. So I'm going to take, again, that top hamburger cylinder that we're getting so much use out of. I'm going to duplicate this off, pull this on up, and then we'll hold down Alt and scale this down, and then Control-Alt, and I'm going to pull this up to about where it breaks into that kind of domey shape. Um, looks like this is the reference starting to slide a little bit, and also it looks like there's some nuance to this shape. Looks like this is a little bit... This is pretty drastic. Uh, no, I guess that is about right. Eh, we'll just kind of eyeball it. So here's what we need to do. Um, I'm gonna go through here, and again, we're gonna go into insert, multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and I'm gonna kind of click and pull inwards just to kind of 
get that little um, that kind of that taper in there and then hold down control alt go to unmatch mesh center and again hold down alt and just kind of put this back so it just kind of follows that line and then control shift grab the top pieces here control shift drag to invert that uh, geometry modify topology delete hidden and one more time just run a close convex hole and again I'm going to snap my camera back so I can see what I'm doing so as I as I come on delete hidden close convex hole what are you doing to me there we go okay now work this time that's what I need so we can just kind of dial in this and if it's snapping or doing something weird we can just grab uh, this top shape here hit control W and then I hit W control tap this poly group here uh, again I'm gonna go to unmesh mesh center I'm just gonna put it down at the bottom here and we just kind of manually scale this back down so there we go and then on top of that's gonna be the little band it looks like and it also looks I mean I guess we'll make this I don't know how accurate we need to make this let's go in here to insert single edge loop <laughs> I'm going to put a poly loop, poly group right here. I'm going to go in here. Let's go ahead and say Shift Z to get rid of this. So you can see what I'm doing. Uh, poly group, poly loop. So I'm going to grab this bottom one here. Just Alt Tap as I do that. Q Mesh, poly group all. And I'm just going to, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to insert just a small single edge loop right here. So I can now say transpose. Make sure it's different on the bottom here. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say transpose polygroup island and I'm just gonna unmask that and then again go to unmesh mesh center hold down alt oops hold down alt I'm just gonna kind of bump that out just a tiny bit and then on top of this this is gonna be a separate piece but I can use the underlying mesh um, for this so I'm gonna say we've got this mesh sitting here I'm gonna duplicate this off and then this band here I'm gonna recreate this real quick so insert single ledge loop right where that band ends where the band starts is basically this bottom line so I can go ahead and hold down alt and get rid of oops go into solo mode so you can get access to this geo because if you have if you have z fighting or geo right on top of each other it may have a hard time selecting it there we go and then one more time you know what, we'll do this hold down control shift go in here to uh, select the lasso so we can hold control shift tap this edge that'll go ahead and grab that entire edge ring control shift drag geometry modified topology delete hidden Z modeler brush Q mesh poly group ball and you guys are all caught up you know how to do this this is not rocket science um, and then one last thing we need to make a star seems like oh my god I made a star just like this once and it was a uh, it was interesting. Why well, can't I remember how to do it? Um, I mean, one easy thing is uh, we do have, let's go ahead and do a quick save. That's nine on your keyboard, I believe. Let's go out of edit mode, switch, control N. Um, so here's the star. I bet it's a Polymesh 3D star. No, that wasn't it. I think maybe we started with a cylinder. So if we go hit, if we hit W, you can go in here and you can set up a uh, poly cylinder or a cylinder 3d we'll just do a cylinder 3d boy it makes it small and then we'll go in here and you can set this to how many v and h divides you want this is one two three four five sided a five sided star here so we can start with this and then let's see if we can't do it like a split point and then <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. Uh, let me take the side here. Oh, this is gonna be ugly. Okay, there, there's there's a there's a fallback I can use, but I'm gonna see if I can't figure this out. So we're gonna go in here, insert multiple edge loops, uh, zero elevation. Let's go ahead and keep our poly group here. I'm gonna put one right down the middle of these. Uh, that's not exactly right, is it? Okay, we just need to do one side though. That's the good news. We can just flip it over. Okay good enough so we'll say delete hidden so one two and then i'm gonna say <laughs> bridge uh let's see point we're going to do a um bridge two points so here to here here to here here oh wait 
yeah, that's the middle. And then this one we don't need, so we can just like collapse this edge over here. Whatever, get this out of the way. Yoink, yoink. And then bridge. And then do a quick uh, mirror across the X, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and those those legs are totally busted. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to mirror that, would I? Because this is actually this just flipped upside down. Okay, that's fine. Okay, did I do it? So now we're going to go through here. Uh, we have X symmetry turned on. So hold down Control Shift Alt to get rid of these. Geometry modified topology delete hidden. Let's turn this off so we can see what we're doing. And uh, boy, that was ugly, but I think we got what we needed out of it. Uh, there we go. Control W, uncrease all. Okay, that kind of worked, I suppose. All right, I'll get caught up here with the. Sorry if my head's going out of frame, but I don't feel like fixing it. Mm-hmm. How can we make a ripped jean and ZBrush? Um, really easy. Just put a hole in hole in the cloth, and then I mean, if you want to get specific, have I ever done? Oh. I think I've done torn clothing, have I not? Let me load up my usual suspects here. YouTube playlists, um, art station, and I think that's all I usually pull up here. Uh, gosh, let's see. Rip. Clothing, piping, material basics. Uh, I don't remember if I've ever done like rip clothing. I vaguely remember doing like jeans on this guy, but I don't think I put any rips in them. Essentially, I mean, I think you should you you should be able to follow along with this. It's basically just make a pair of jeans, and then if you need to, you can freeze transformations. I guess I can pull this up real quick. We'll take a little detour. Quick save, load tool. Uh, that was streaming. That was regular show. What would that be under? That was death. Hold on. Not being morbid, that's I think that's literally who he is. Uh, death working. Let's go to open path. Uh huh. Uh huh. Date modified. Z project or Z. Okay, pose Z tool. Oof, my left leg's falling asleep. Hold on. Oops, I gotta close this. Sorry. frame so we got this guy here and uh, again this oh this is on previous live streams by the way so for the uninitiated uh, here's my art station page and if you go here um, for example if you're brand new to ZBrush and you don't even know what program this is you can start here I, I went around and went through and rearranged this so if you see these little plus signs in the corner so here's the intro to ZBrush and all these are free by the way you just click on here and you can go and you can watch 50 videos and sometimes there's some ancillary information in here, sometimes not. Um, so here's Intro to ZBrush, and then here's the What's New series all the way back to 4R8. So 4R8, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and then 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, and 2022. That'll get you all caught up on most things ZBrush. Uh, on my YouTube channel is where the videos are. This one's a little bit more difficult to navigate, but here you go if you need it. And uh, yes, we'll stick with that. So there we go and art station page but the whole reason of me going here was to explain that you can watch the making of this guy and he's got a little pair of jeans they're not real super super tight or anything like that uh, as far as detail or execution goes but it's a pair of jeans so uh we, when we see we have subdivision levels here so if you had legs underneath here which i'm not sure that i do in fact i'm pretty sure that i don't um you could get away with just going in here and holding down alt let's turn off x symmetry uh, let's go in here, lazy radius, tap L. So you can go in here and just push the cloth in here and then that'll give it a torn look. Uh, if you do need to actually put holes in your mesh here, what you can do is you can go in here to free subdivision levels. That'll drop it down to the lowest subdiv level here and you can hold down Alt and you can just go through and actually poke holes in here. So I'm gonna hold down Z model brush BZM, go in here, say delete polygroup all and then um, and you, you could actually do this first 
and then build your cloth around actual holes in your mesh as opposed to going back in and putting them in, but I'm having to do that because it's done. Uh, unfreeze my subdivision levels. So now those polygons will be deleted. It'll reproject my, um, my mesh back. And then now I have holes in my mesh. Now the only downside is um, there's no thickness to these jeans. So, uh, and also if I wanna smooth these out, I gotta go into my smooth brush auto masking, nope, not auto masking, uh, smooth brush modifiers, hold down shift and take, say min connected down to one. So that way you can actually smooth open clothing borders. I think there's also a smooth cloth that you can, you can do, but in here, this is where you can go through and now you have an actual hole in your mesh. And if you had thickness to your pants, you know, you could, you could do that. So, and, and across here, if you needed to, if I go out of I guess I'm not in solo mode. I'm just going to grab something that doesn't have any subdivision here. I guess these all do. Let's say we didn't. Um, we could go in here and do like brush curve. I guess curve tube, curve strap snap might work. Just pull across here. Um, I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to say uh, underneath your stroke modifiers for this brush. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, turn on. We're going to do a as line curve mode snap that should be fine so now if i just put these on as a line just put these on here uh, just tap off so now you can kind of put those those threads across or whatever you want to do to make this look like you know it's actually a pair of jeans that has some you know whatever your reference has basically um and then from here, we can go ahead and say, you know what, let's grab all these, control shift A, split, hit, oops, split hidden. And then now we'll maybe subdivide these once and smooth them out and whatever you want to do it again to kind of sell those as, as genes. So, uh, and there's also alphas you can make that'll kind of give you kind of a ripped look if that's interesting to you. Um, yes, that's true. I forgot my basketball player, uh, this guy right has to so speaking of here's intro to zbrush stuff there's also an intro to zbrush if you have art station learning uh there's like a 60 117 video 16.5 hour uh course making of this thing just taking you through all a bunch of zbrush fundamentals so you can check that out too um yes that's that's reference cool thank you uh there is a star you know what here's it okay let's talk about that because this was a little bit much. I, another thing too, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to do a deformation, oops, deformation unify just to get this thing sized correctly and I'll hold down shift and just rotate this around. So we made our star. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can make a star. If you really don't want, you know, like this type of geometry, you can literally go into your alpha. So if we go in here to alpha and we grab the star alpha here and we go into the alpha options and then we say alpha um make 3d let's take this maybe to 128 turn off double-sided make 3d that'll make you a 3d star um and you could z remesh this if you wanted to or you can keep it if you do want it double-sided you can turn on double-sided hit make 3d and then you can literally go in here with like your knife tool and just slice off what you don't need um in fact we can go in here and we can slice off slice this off and again let's try okay we have x symmetry turned on let's do a quick geometry modified topology mirror and weld and we'll do a zero measure half adaptive size down to zero keep groups smooth groups down to zero zero mesh and then again you can just keep zero meshing half and this will give you star geometry and in fact you know if this gets a little wobbly around your edges just control shift tap delete hidden go through here um Q mesh polygroup ball, pull this forward, and now you have this. And in fact, now that we have separate polygroups, you can go in here to geometry, uh, geometry crease, and if you hold down control on this bevel width, that'll put a, a polygroup in between all of those. So that could be useful to you. Uh, yeah, so that's another way to do it. Um, so as far as what's in here, is there a star in like my tools or my Match make image play shadow box remesh see sketch there might be you I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong there very well could be because there do have some interesting stuff in here like dice primitives and all sorts of neat stuff hmm miscellaneous possibly somewhere in here there's something use, useful or worthwhile for star things maybe i'm trying to think there's alphas 
you can do um, kind of the same thing as this Alpha Make 3D. You can do Spotlight. If we go in here and we grab the Spotlight, I don't want to double click this because it's going to re remove mine, but you can double click these and you can use Spotlight 3D Projection, which is, um, i trying to remember what version of ZBrush that was. That was 20, uh, it doesn't matter, let's just find it. Um, snapshot 3d so uh youtube channel ah, this is back when i wasn't doing very good on my descriptions there but there is a <laughs> i mean hell just here it is so here's spotlight 2.0 snapshot 3d um you can go through here and you can use spotlight to create a geo and there's probably a star in there kind of the same thing though you'd be converting an alpha to geometry um 10-sided cylinder scale in every second vertex. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was looking for. Instead of five and then cutting, 10-sided every other vertex. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes. So, uh, retopology for hard surface game assets. Uh, kind of. Not, not soup, not like a weapon or anything, but we did do this mechanical skull series. Goes into that a bit. Um, I don't know if this has everything on it, though. I think it's on Gumroad. High-res mechanical painter bakes material. Oh, yeah, the game res is on Gumroad. Um, it, I mean, it's not rocket science. There's some... And honestly, I don't even remember if I did it that great of a job. Again, like, if you're doing a weapon, where do you put your edges and where you cut your UVs? It makes a bit of a difference. Um, Cool. Uh, I make details by substance painter. Normal map instead of zebra sculpting and bake them. I think it's easier in substance painter because the non-destructive layers. What do you think? I think absolutely. If it doesn't break the surface, don't bother putting it in ZBrush unless you need to 3D print it. In which case you'd have to reverse engineer. Heck, you might even be worthwhile to have a visual target in painter and bring it back into ZBrush. Um, but yeah, there's no reason to put anything in your model if it doesn't need to be there. Uh, for sure. So we'll go back here. So we have a nice start here. You know what, just, just for completeness, let's start, let's go in here to uh, Cylinder 3D, Edit Mode, down here we'll say this H divide, uh, wait, H divide is 10, and uh, V divides is three, make poly mesh 3D, and then we have, I think X symmetry will work in this case, so here, this one, this one, this one, invert scale hold down alt we're getting a lot of use out of that there we go look at that oh man making me look stupid but that's all right now now this will be cemented in my brain there we go we got a star so in this star we don't need uh and this star eh, okay so we have a star here back to my guy here oh also let's turn on our floor to make sure we're Z forward, that's actually kind of important. Um, in fact, so important, I'm going to say Shift Z to turn my reference back on. I'm going to reposition my reference so it matches again. And then if I need to, I can go in here to Movie uh, Timeline Show, which I also have in here, which I can just drag this dot off, redrag the dot, or put the dot back on, and then go ahead and turn that back off. So we got this. We need our star. I'm going to go ahead. You can make an insert mesh. Uh, or an IMM brush and just drag it on there. I'm going to append that star, however, and that's going to throw it down at our base. And again, I'm just going to do a deformation unify, hit W, move this out. Oh. Of course it has. Uh, we did the top here. I'm going to unmask. There we go. And I'm going to go to unmash mesh center rotate this and then oh, we have the X symmetry turn on rotate this turn off solo mode go back move forward there we go and now put this into place scale it and again I want I want to keep it down the middle of my scene so if it's a little bit off that's okay uh, now next things Next, we have a hole in this one. Is that in all of them? I don't see that in any of these other ones. So I'm going to leave that out. What I would probably do in this case is, I guess that's like a little porthole for you to look through. Maybe the older ones had them. Because these ones look kind of old. I wonder if there's an extra little thing you could climb up and kind of peek out. And then they took those out in later iterations. 
Hmm. Mystery. Okay, you know what? We'll put it in there. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to find is if, okay, they have it on all four sides. One, two, three, four. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, one more time, we're going to append a cylinder, is that a cylinder 3D? Cylinder 3D. Uh, I'm going to rotate this, holding down shift so it's looking right at us. Uh, we're going to scale this down. Let's hold down alt and scale down this way so we can move this into place here. And uh, now I can scale this uniformly. So we basically want to cut out a hole this size, uh, kind of perfect, neat. And then I'm going to duplicate this off and I'll hold down shift and rotate this around. And in fact, um, I'm going to Boolean these out and I'm going to rebuild this geometry. And I want to keep this all one piece, I believe. Okay, I think this will be fine. So in order to do this, I'm going to say this is our piece of geometry we want to Boolean. I'm going to turn off my floor. I'm going to do a group by normals that's underneath your polygroup menu. And then I want to go ahead and say crease PG to crease all my polygroups here. And then I'm going to go in here, keep my crease level at 15 because um, I don't want to do any special fall off like oh, crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, what's a good resource for you? Um, probably, you know what? Intro to ZBrush, new and updated. Down here is like dynamic subdivisions is creasing. So here's all your Z modeler stuff and dynamic subdivision increasing. Go check that out. That'll get you caught up on what I'm doing. So uh, we have dynamic turned on, smooth subdiv of probably three is fine. I'm just trying to get a smooth representation and keeping this stuff nice and creased. So when I Z remesh it, it'll have a uh, nice sharp information. Uh, let's also hold down shift. I'm gonna say hold down shift and do this bent arrow down to the bottom and then go bent arrow up twice. Hold down shift, turn off all these eyeballs because I just wanna see these Boolean operations. Uh, for these as well, you know, I can just merge these down into one object. So that's just under your subtool merge down. So we got one piece here and on this one too, I want to get nice sharp. I want these super round, uh, but also nice and sharp. So we're going to go in here. I'm just going to do a crease uh, on there with a crease tolerance at the 45. That's under your geometry crease menu here. And then again, turn on dynamic, nice, smooth. And in fact, this one, let's do a dynamic Smooth so of a four, just really, really sharp. Um, if you see, you start getting a fall off on these edges, you can go in here, you can do shift D to turn off dynamic. We'll put in, and also get rid of the scalloping, insert single edge loop. Let's put in a little control loop here, maybe a control loop here, just to keep those edges contained a little bit. So there you go, nice and sharp is what I'm looking for. This subtractive, turn on live Boolean, and now this is gonna cut through. I don't really care about the insides because I'm gonna make that shell uh, in a bit, it doesn't look like the shell's that thick, which is good. Um, so anyway, we have the live Boolean ready to go and it is live, so you can go through here and you can just move this stuff around, do whatever you want to uh, with it. But I think this is what we want. Let's double check. Yeah, that looks right. So now what we need to do is we're gonna go down here to our G um, Boolean, turn on dynamic subdiv, because we have those on, make Boolean mesh. That'll make you a U mesh out here with polygroups that we like. So control shift, select rectangle. I'm gonna grab all of these polygroups we wanna keep. In fact, this bottom one I don't even need. I can cap that later or it's gonna have thickness, I don't need it. So delete hidden. Um, and now we have X symmetry turned on. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna turn off the line so you can see this. So I'm gonna go in here to transform symmetry in the X and Z direction. So if I turn on my floor, you're gonna see X direction is this way, Z direction is this way, and the Z is forward. So if I do a mirror and weld in the X and Z direction, yes, it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this on. So I'll transform symmetry in the X and Z. So when I do my Z remesh, it'll save me some time and give me a better result. So Z remesher, how many polygons? Let's do adaptive size down to zero, I suppose. Uh, the higher the adaptive size, the more it tries to build in extra geometry to maintain edges. The lower, the more even quads you get. Sometimes for some shapes you got to play with this, but I think it'll be okay. Um, that was nice, even quads. Uh, keep groups on. Smooth groups we can turn down to zero because my groups are already smooth. And then target polygon count of five should be okay. So we'll go ahead and zero mesh this. There we go. There we go. So we got some new geometry. Um, I guess I suppose it did an okay job here. Let's go ahead and say half. Keep groups. I'm just going to keep hitting half until it gets. Uh, un, un, untainable 
until it starts doing a bad job. Eh, right about here is where I think I wanna stop pressing my luck. So now that we have this, uh, we need to give this thing some thickness. It looks like this is actually pretty shin, shin, pretty thin sheet metal here. And then maybe when it gets down here, it gets a little globbier. I don't know, but um, we'll just go ahead and give this thing some thickness. Some thickness. Z modeler brush. We'll do a instead of a Q mesh, I'm going to do an extrude. All polygons, just in case things tend to kind of stick. When you do a Q mesh, I'm gonna push this inwards. Now when I'm pushing it in, you're gonna see it's gonna flip my normals, no problem. Go down here to display properties, flip those back. And now we have uh, thickness on there. Um, and the other cool thing is we have poly groups. So now we can go in here and we can say crease PG. And on this one, I'm gonna do a crease level of two and then a smooth of three. Just get kind of a nice fall off on here. Make a little bit nicer. Uh, then we can go back in here, we don't need these little working things anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete, delete out of my scene, and then we'll just append that U mesh into my scene. So I'll turn everything back on, uh, go back, use our arrow keys here, and then we're good to go. Um, okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> Let's see, very hard to see the model if you don't mind. Can you lower the transparency of the background a bit? Uh, oh, you're talking about this, this thing here? Um, this here, there you go. Now you can kind of see, oh, whoops. Uh, let me see, oh no, that is front. Okay, we're good. There we go. So now uh, we got that. And now let's make some of this other stuff here. Uh, I'm not gonna do the face just yet because that's gonna be super destructive. Um, but while we're looking at this, looks like this is missing a bunch of bars too. That's unfortunate. Eh, we can bring in some other reference. So, uh, this cheese down here, let's go ahead and flop some cheese on here. So we have our hamburger here. It looks like we need to reposition this just a tiny bit in the place. I'm going to movie timeline show. And I'm also going to turn off light boolean, drag this off, re put a dot in there. There we go. So now, um... We have hamburger here, we have cheese on the bottom, we have pickles and like, looks like mayonnaise on the top or something, maybe mustard and got bleached in the sun. Uh, so okay, for this cheese, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this bottom hamburger thing right here, we're gonna go into solo mode. Actually, we can hold down shift and just turn off the eyeballs for everything. And then I always tap the nameplate to re-grab this. Um, so now, we have this. Um, Again, you can use an IMM brush, but we're working right down the middle. So let's, let's just do an insert. And we're going to grab a plain 3D here. So we've got just these two showing. Uh, this plain 3D, I'm gonna, if I go to the side and try to rotate it, you're like, hey, where'd everything go? So we're gonna go down here to geometry, dynamic subdiv. Turn this on, but turn smooth down to zero and just turn on thickness. Um, anything in my dynamic menu is just a preview. So I can do shift D to turn it off and D to turn it back on. So now we have some thickness to our mesh, which is nice. So now you can see it. And so I can rotate this. So again, if I turn my reference back on, you're gonna see these corners are like, it's actually like, looks like two pieces of cheese. Let me see if I can figure this out. Um, or do these corners just flop over? Uh, might be just one piece of cheese where the corners just kind of flop. Okay, so in order to get this to work correctly, I'm, I am going to have to make some modifications to this lower meat here. Uh, a couple different ways I could do that. I could go in there to group by normals and then do what we did earlier, crease, uh, just drag in a little bit of bevel width. Uh, that does increase the overall size of your mesh. If you don't want to do that, you can literally go in here with the Z-Modeler brush and just do like a bevel as of complete and then just tap both sides and make them the same. And I suppose that'll work. If you did want to round these out, you can go in here and again, do your insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and then you can just kind of pull up and down to go more resolution in and out to our left and right to kind of round that out. But I think we'll be okay. Um, and here's what I'm looking for really. Uh, I do, if I was to go in here and hit D for dynamic, this dynamic doesn't have thickness on, but it does have smooth, smooth subdiv. Um, but you can see you're gonna get some kind of a lot of fall off here and a little bit of scalloping. So this is where I was saying, go in here, insert single edge loop, and you'll see, if I turn polyframe off, as I insert an edge loop here, it kind of helps control that fall off a little bit there. There we go. So again, click and drag, add a, you're basically just adding a line 
oops, uh, shift D, adding a line in there. And if you're going to sculpt on everything in here, you know, you can add multiple edge loops or you can even zero mesh this to get a nice sculptable surface, but I don't think I need to worry about that. Um, if you want, you can go in here to crease PG and then just do a very low crease level, crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two, and that'll kind of retain, kind of retain those creases, but not overdo it. Um, and then if you're happy with this, and I guess I am because, well, let's see. I do want this geometry, so insert single edge loop. I'm gonna put a little bit more geometry here where I might be sculpting. Um, and then I also, I'm probably gonna Boolean through this so I can get that kind of seated divot in here. Um, I could kind of build that in. If I go in here to control alt and just grab this middle piece here and just kind of drag down. That's the overall look I'm gonna end up going for. Uh, the, the window with a hole in the middle, um, which again, I could do, let's do this. Poly loop, poly group here, just to show you. And then we'll do the same on the back. And then now if I go in here to inset, actually, did I do the same? If I ever wanna make the same on the top and the bottom, and it's just an, an arbitrary place, I can go in here still and do a, a mirror and weld in the Y direction with local sim turned on. And that way, you know, I get the same poly group on the top and bottom. And then I go back in here with insert single edge loop, hold down alt. Anyway, so we can go in here, inset polygroup all or polygroup island might be safer, legacy, and then pull this in. So if we want to put a hole in here, let's turn off solo mode. Let's turn everything back on but our cheese. And now we're going to say, okay, this hole is going to go around uh, this object. So let's go ahead and inset. And I'm going to tap alt just to give you an obvious different... Um, polygroup here. So we did that on the top. Let's go ahead and do it on the bottom. And then we can say just Q mesh polygroup ball, pull through. That'll go ahead and sew that up for us. And then we can even again, insert single edge if you want to get rid of that. So now we can go back in here, crease PG, crease level one, smooth sub div, and then we'll put in some more control loops. Um, this one might be better if we want to do a top and bottom inset again. And you can just kind of inset some control loops. And then again, for the bottom, there we go. D for dynamic, and now we've got this. And then now we can say, actually, before we inset, let's take these points here. W, go out of solo mode and be like, okay, what's that What's that angle? It looks not super steep, but I don't know, steep enough. Something like this, maybe. And uh, okay, so once we have that, and again, on all these other pieces, we can go through and do kind of the same thing. Um, but that'll get us close enough. So now I'm gonna go in here and do my inset here, here, D for dynamic. Uh, we'll do crease level of, eh, crease level one should still be fine. There we go. So that's one way to go through and do that without resulting, without relying on, you know, booleing and Z remeshing necessarily. So we'll turn everything back on. We gotta get our cheese back. Now, when this cheese flops over, um, and actually, now that I look at this, it's going to go meat, bun, meat, cheese, metal. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this meat off here, and I'm going to steal all these top layers. So, Shift D, um, I'm going to grab this and this, Control Shift, drag to invert, to modify geometry, modify to polygy, delete hidden, uh, make sure double is off because we don't need, see how we have both layers. Control shift drag over a few points on the bottom, control shift A, control shift drag again, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And then again, extrude all polygons, pull this down, uh, display properties flip, which we talked about earlier. And there we go, and let's move this up just a little bit. There's our metal piece here. The metal piece, does it go? Eh, it kind of goes out to all the way to the cheese. So we'll say, I can keep it extrude, polygroup island, just hold down shift you know, kind of pull along that surface normal. And in fact, if you wanted to round this out again, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, click and pull, kind of pull that out a little bit. Let's go do an uncrease all, and then do another crease PG dynamic. There we go. So now we have our metal inset here that I think is about right, but not quite done yet. I'm going to drop this meat down just a little bit. Boy, this is becoming just complicated and and then now we got to put our cheese on that meat so here and then back to our cheese here raise this up and let's everybody cross your fingers for me 
So we have this geometry. It has dynamic thickness, shift D to turn it off, D to turn it back on. We can go in here to dynamics. Let's go in here to skin shader four so you can see a little bit easier. Um, and then we have gravity turned on. I'm gonna turn that gravity strength down quite a bit. And then we're gonna say, uh, calculate a collision volume. This inflate, I'm gonna turn down quite a bit as well. So that'll go ahead and turn my collision volume on. It's going to turn all anything down here into collidable geometry. However, I'm gonna alt tap this. In order to get this to simulate on those actual verts, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna duplicate this off, hide the dyna dynamic one. And on this one, I'm gonna say dynamic apply. That's under your dynamic menu, menu here. So now if I have the cheese here, and then this one's showing, I'm gonna recalculate my collision volume. So it has the actual geometry in here, that soft geometry. And then we're just gonna say, I know, gravity's in this direction by default. So we're gonna run the simulation here. We're just gonna let that cheese kind of flop over the side here. And uh, we'll see if we can't clean that up. Um. <laughs> yes, it's from hell. Yeah, these things are old, man. I haven't seen these since... I haven't seen these since I was this kid playing around on them. Um, when I use sticky mode, it gives me a hold to control. It makes even copies of the object. It gives me a snap back and grab that at the same distance. How can I do the same with rotation? Um, rotation I wouldn't do. Let's go ahead and do a quick save. So if we have a poly mesh here, and you want to do like... Um, a repeat. So here's, if you hold down control, drag out a certain distance and then just continue dragging. You don't need to use sticky mode. Um, so that way you don't have to keep, you know, repeating. So again, control drag, let go of control and just keep dragging. So that'll be that way. So for rotation, I wouldn't use that. I would use array mesh. Array mesh, lock position, lock size. Go down here to rotate. Um, I don't even know what direction I'm looking at. So we'll just say Y amount's fine. We'll do 360. And I also like to use transpose. Uh, hit Y to go into transpose, and then you can say grab this. Oops, grab this pivot here. Uh, let's do our repeats up. There we go. So now you can kind of set your pivots, and then that that way you can just dial in however many repeating objects you want. Uh, Boolean add extracting. How are you going to go with smooth beveling the shape edges with the bevel pro, but manually? Um, if I'm ever doing anything that's like Dynamesh and I just want to kind of get something representative, I'll use Bevel Pro. Generally speaking, though, when I use Booleans, I try to keep my poly groups just like we did with this thing. Um, I didn't, you know, so with this, I don't have to go in with Bevel Pro and be like, oh, how do I, how do I go through here and like get Bevel Pro to do what I need to? I can literally just go in here and say, you know what, I want to inset poly group all here, I can just inset all these and then Q mesh polygroup all hold down shift and pull. You know, I can I can do any number of things to modify this just with modeling as opposed to resorting to Boolean Pro. It's not that's nothing wrong with Boolean Pro, and I would use it or sorry, Bevel Pro. Um, and I would use it if I needed to, but in this case, I if it's if it's simple geometry and I'm booling something out and zero mesh will get me uh, something workable that I can use with Z modeler, um, I'll just do that. And then I can build my Booleans in or if I'd like. Um, you had to make a character in your job. Oh, I wish. Uh, would you start with standard ZBrush base or make it from scratch? Um, I mean, it's good practice to model something from scratch so you learn anatomy. Um, if I'm doing it for a job, I'm not going to learn anatomy. I mean, I guess you could. If you're fast, you can learn anatomy on the job, get paid for it, sure. Um, but I'm starting with a base mesh. I'm going to start as done and as finished as I can so I can get paid for doing less work. <laughs> uh, now, that can bite you in the ass. It can be like, you can go, if you go 10 years of, you know, taking a base mesh and making a human out of it by snapping the scan data and then cleaning it up, you know, you may not be learning as much as you could during that 10 years, but, I mean, if you're getting your, your work done like this, sandbag, you got all the time in the world to study up on anatomy. Um, and still get your stuff turned in and get a paycheck. Um, dynamic subdiv one on subtool, but only on one polygroup. No, I think it's every, all the uh, subtool is just one and done. Um, cool. 
Why is this in talk shows? This is horrible talking. I don't know. I didn't set this up, so sorry if I'm showing up in talk shows. Um, we're going to do a dynamic menu. Uh, yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, transpose cloth instead of sim. Oh, that's another one too. So if you want to say, uh, let's go back, hit Y. Thank you. Uh, so we have BT for our transpose brushes. We have transpose cloth, BTC. Then you can just literally just pull this down and it'll kind of wrap as you pull. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the reason I turn that gravity strength down is if it's too high, it'll go down too fast. And number one, it could skip your collision entirely. If it goes down too fast too, it'll start stretching your mesh. Um, so that's another alternative. Just whoop, transpose and just... Doo -doo 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 -doo. There you go. Now to clean this up, you can see how... On here, the cheese is nice and smooth, although it does look like it hits that bun and kind of like tilts out a little bit. Um, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn everything back on. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna make sure this isn't too much. It looks like it might be a little big. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit and then again, use transpose cloth. Scale it down even more. Transpose cloth. Scale a little more. Oh wait, damn. As I'm scaling it, transpose is, basically when you're using cloth, it wants to retain the relationships between these verts. So it won't let you stretch too much, it won't let you compress too much because it's cloth. It's just like if you were to take a towel, it wants to maintain the relationships between the, the atoms that make up the towel. You can't just take a towel and move it real fast and have it stretch, right? So that's that. However, while I'm scaling this down, I need to go to BTR, which is transpose regular. Um, transpose, transpose, and then I can scale this down and then BTC to go back to transpose cloth. And then we can say, oof, that's a little too small. BTR, scale up, BTC. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, and here's the thing, man. Uh, it's close enough for government work, I can go through and I can kind of tweak as needed. So if I turn on X symmetry, I'm gonna do another transform X and Z symmetry, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld in the X and Z. Um, Cause again, I'm gonna end up zero meshing this anyways. And I'm just gonna manually go through here and just kind of get what I need out of this. We need a little cheese poking through here. So I'm just gonna make it so, Captain. Um, looks like it goes all the way around the burger too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Man, you know cheese isn't going to do that if you just drop it. This is when you start noticing the shortcuts people take. Concept artists. No, it's for it's for design purposes, so I'm not going to um, hammer too hard on that. You don't want to get too caught up in like, well, technically, actually, this cheese wouldn't poke out on the side if it was uh, the cheese that says this is the size. Uh, I'm going to take this back. It's basically like, no, for to make it a good design and to be appealing and work in the round, um, you, you, you fudge it a little bit, right? Why not? So... We're looking good. Now, again, it's warbly, right? I'm not a robot, so I did a pretty poor job on here, so I'm gonna fix this. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna say, give me a weld points, crank that weld distance up, geometry modified topology, weld points, just to kind of start welding this stuff up. In fact, I'm gonna crank that distance way up. And I'm gonna turn off open circle. So I just basically welded all these points that were kind of sitting next to each other. Um, and then what I can do is I'm going to run, so we've been talking about crease a lot. So underneath the uh, crease menu down here, I'm just going to run a crease tolerance at 45. Eh, uncrease all, maybe a little higher. Basically what I'm trying to do is crease these edges and then also crease these uh, corners here. Did it not get it really? Okay, fine. Let's manually do it. Uh, Z modeler brush. Oh, it didn't do it because this thickness is fake. Let's go over here. Uh, let's turn on, so we have dynamic is on. Thickness is also on. Apply that thickness, and so now we have real geo. And then uh, if we turn dynamic back on, it adds more thickness. We don't want that, so back down to zero and then turn dynamic off. Now that we have that, we can run our crease tolerance here, and it will crease those edges, or you can manually do it. So now that I have that, I can go in here to deformation polished by features. A feature is a polygroup border and also a crease. Now, here's the thing. If we go in here to 
uh, polish by features there's open circle and closed circle if we do open circle it's really going to polish everything a lot if we do closed circle it's going to polish everything but kind of maintain its volumes and in fact it may also behoove us let's see polish by features just just to kind of tap a couple times and then go back in and move um, so it'll kind of yeah back symmetry on yeah so it'll kind of smooth out and also you know what let's go back here because we duplicated this meat off right there's our meat with dynamic on. Here's our meat with dynamic off. So we're gonna take the dynamic on meat, delete it out of our scene, and then back to our cheese here. There we go. So you can kind of, again, move stuff as needed, get it, you know, maybe might be a little warbly, and then go back in with that deformation. And you can even add an actual subdivision so that your geometry is a little more stable. Uh, just run a quick, just tap a quick polish by feature here. And looks like this kind of popped out just a bit. And again, polish by features. All right, something like this. Whew. There we go. So now we have uh, cheese on our thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, There's a way to put subtools in a separate menu. Uh, I don't think so. Like to drag this out? No, and like put it on another screen? Not, not, not that I'm aware of. There may be plugins that'll allow you to have like a subtool menu, um, but not natively in ZBrush. Uh, can I have my subtool list on the left side with max visible as separate from the main toolbar? Oh, that would be, that would be awesome. Now that I think, oh, oh, yeah, you could. Um, hold on, quick save. Let's see if it'll let me. Will it let me? Let's try. I'm scared though. Preferences, config, enable, customize. I'm gonna go in here to custom UI. If you want more information on custom UI, it's also in this intro pack here, somewhere in here. Yeah, custom. Where is it at? Custom interface and menus to speed up your workflow. So check that out. Video number 42, it looks like. Um, like so. Uh, oh yeah, so we have custom preferences. Uh, enable customize. We're gonna do a create a new menu and we're gonna call this one test. And then that's gonna put test over here. And if you click on it, it'll put it alphabetically. So we have a test menu in here. So we're gonna take this test menu and then again with enable customize we have subtool i'm gonna hold down control can we i don't know what i'd be grabbing let's try it uh so in here we're gonna say custom sub palette so we'll give it its own sub palette we could even name it subtool so i'm gonna take this visible count and it's gonna try and rebuild this subtool menu and i wonder if it'll allow us to have it closed in one because I mean you could literally I'm just I'm not gonna rebuild everything but um, I wonder I've never actually tried to do this I'm not even sure what the hell I'm okay so I can hold down control alt and we'll call this subtool test and then let's go ahead and go out of enable customize so here we are just regular ZBrush we have a new custom menu with subtool test now if I take this visible count it's gonna raise and lower that one but it's not doing it over here do I need to that's a visible tool count of one. Preferences. Hmm. There might be something fancy going on over here. And I can't like control alt. Let's see. I don't think so. Preferences. Enable customize. Can I just oof. Don't want to delete it. If you can figure out a way. If you can figure out a way to get this visible count to work over here in your custom menu, um, then yeah, you could have a custom menu that you pull over here to the side just by itself. And then it'll, you know, you can have a visible subtool count over here with like 50 and that won't increase the size of your tool menu if that's what you're going for. But in this case, I couldn't get it to work, unfortunately. So I'm gonna hold down control alt, just delete test, hit enter. It'll delete that custom menu. Then we'll go back in here to brush. Sorry about that. I wish there might be a way. How can I work as fast as Mr. Pavlovich? Um, I don't know that I work that fast. 
Um, and also, you know, it's, it's a little bit faster to work if I'm just doing this and not explaining things or jumping around the menus and stuff. Honestly, a lot of it's in here. It's custom menu. Um, I didn't title that one. Oops. Um, apply noise on my own mesh on length when using a curve mode. Um, you could set up a brush with curve mode turned on that'll drag noise on your mesh, if I understand correctly. Uh, simulate liquid and ZBrush. Um, no, I've done a, uh, we, no, um, <laughs> at least not as far as I know. I do have, I mean, we did do this, but this is more of just like a little bit of dynamics. So here's cloth and you know, a little bit of key shot render, but yeah, we made this in this live stream here. Um, let's see if I, I don't remember how, there's a couple different ways you go about it. Yeah, okay, Sculptors Pro um, with radial symmetry turned on. Um, but yeah, no no simulating water. You could use some noises to get you like a, like a wave effect, um, but no like water simulation. There is liquid simulation. Uh, if you go in here, it's not what you think it is though. It's basically, here's liquify. Um, if you use this, it'll make it look like a piece of cloth is falling through water as opposed to just gravity affecting it and hitting a collision volume. Uh, but it's not really a liquid sim. Um, enable customize interface and drag tool to the left. This whole thing. I mean, you can, you can have the whole tool menu on the left, but then if you want the tool menu open and you just want sub tool over here, that seems to be tougher. Okay. So we got this, uh, we got this going. We need to get, we need to get cracking. So, uh, let's go ahead and put some bars on here. Now the bars are separate. They do end up. Let's get a closer look in here. So they do it. So here's the the safety layer between our cheese and our meat. And then in here we have a bars that have a top bar and these are just straight. They don't curve. And then a bar here and a bar here and they just alternate. So let's use a ray mesh for this. And let's let's do a uh, rudimentary count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven bars around times two is maybe 14 all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's say 14. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in here. Let's put our brush menu back here. Preferences, turn off, enable, customize. So what's an easy way to do this? It should all be pretty easy. So I'm just gonna go down here to the bottom. We're going to append, start simple. We're just gonna append a cube 3D, take this cube here, and we're going to Scale down. The only bad thing is, oops, BTR, go back to regular transpose. So here we have this, and you know, we'll just uniformly scale this down. And I'm going to pull this out towards the front, and we're going to scale it this way. So we're just looking for, and I know this geometry is crap, but um, it's okay. We can fix it. So we're going to go through here, and we're going to give ourselves, again, that little semblance of a bar. And I'm going to see if this doesn't generally match up. Again, it's they just don't have them right down the middle from the straight on shot. And I could bring in more reference, but I just don't feel like doing it. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. Okay, so we can we can modify this too to make sure it fits correctly. So here's our bar. And again, I'm just looking at this reference here. So we have this here. It looks like it kind of curves on the ends. We'll, we'll fix that in just a second. So I'm basically going to put this bar generally into place and I can modify this as needed. Now, again, this geometry is crap. I'm gonna turn on X symmetry. We have L sim turned on. So I'm gonna go in here to zero mesh, half adapted size down to zero, detect edges. And that'll go through and look at my edges. We'll do a quick geometry modify topology mirror and weld. And that'll kind of give me new geo. And in fact, we can just keep hitting half and uh, let's get this nice and plain Jane here. There we go. Uh, again, if you put, we want to simplify this insert single edge loop here and then maybe like every other one we can get rid of. Um, one way to do it. And again, we're gonna thin this out just a tad and maybe push this back just slightly. Now, uh, we wanna duplicate this all around uh, to fit maybe 14-ish of them on there. So what I'm gonna do is what we did earlier, we're gonna go in here to array mesh, lock position, lock size. I'm gonna do reset to set this uh, pivot right here in the middle and then we're going to go in here our world middle and then rotate in the y amount 360 degrees and then i'm going to say repeats of what did we say 14 
And then now I have 14 copies. So now I have to ask myself, is 14 too many? Oh, so it looks like I skipped some. Okay, you know what? We can get this all the way around and then I can go through and delete the ones we don't want. Although that may just be... I don't know. It looks like some of the newer ones has more and then some of the older ones. I think the older ones had a few safety issues. Like this ended up probably a kid decapitated themselves and then this they probably fell out and, uh, and decapitated themselves again somehow. So... I don't know. Uh, we could keep it old school, I suppose. Um, so anyway, we have this here and we have our array mesh. And in fact, another thing we can do, let's try this. Let's go in here to uh, append new. And this one, we're going to do an offset. And I'm going to turn on transpose so I can hit W and then hit Y. We're going to go up in the Y direction. I'm going to use my transpose line to take these, hold down shift, and we'll just put these at the top. And this one looks like it just goes... Yeah, I guess there is kind of a safety or a separator ring underneath here. So just somewhere about there. Um, so now we have a bunch of copies of this thing. So if we want, we can go back here to transform stage one. So you can see these are kind of hashed a little bit. And we can say, you know what, 14 is too many. So we can say maybe try 12. And that kind of spaces them out a little bit more. I think that's a little more in line. Um, another thing too is we can go through here and modify this. So if I turn off transpose, hit W, Y, go to unmatch mesh center. Uh, we can, as, I, as I'm as i modifying this one, the other ones will update. So if it's like, you know, this one seems, that's weird. This one seems a little bit long, so we can pull this in. And also we wanna, I wanna curve out those edges. So one easy way to do that is go in here, insert multiple edge loops, no elevation, keep polygroup, just put one right down the middle and then hover over this geometry and say, bridge, connected polys, circle, uh, specified curvature, Let's say eight triangle sides, curvature of a hundred. Let's try. Yeah, there we go. So that'll go ahead and round those out for me. I'm gonna do a quick uh, group by normals, increase all, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, crease PG. And now we have, you know, that look we're going for. However, if I'm gonna be doing this, for example, and I want this to be welded, like all of these bars and stuff to be welded together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off that that low crease subdivision level and turned up way up so that as we're creating this uh, we can z remesh our boolean operation so we've got this here now in order to keep my array meshes nice i'm going to go into my custom menu you don't have to you can go in here to bi brush insert imm primitives hit m and grab an insert cylinder i'm going to go into a custom menu which has cylinders on here and again we still have x symmetry on here which is nice so i'm going to go a little bit in I'm gonna pull way out and then pull back in. That'll give me a kind of a thin cylinder. We're gonna go in here and we're just gonna run a crease on here. There we go. And then hold down Control Alt, um, unmask these, and then we're just gonna pull up. Oop, hold on. Unmask these tops and then pull these straight up. Now, if these are too uh, thick, what we can do is we can go in here to our Z Modeler brush hover over a face, Q mesh, polygroup all, and then just hold down shift. And again, it's gonna push along that surface normal. Um, and that'll kinda go through there and do what it needs to do. Uh, again, let's say I want these to meet up with this geometry and then control tap and mask. And I want this to meet up with this. Oh, I forgot. Um, here's what we're gonna do. This geometry is actually, that array mesh is adding another transform stage. Not a huge deal. What I can do is I can grab these pieces, control shift A, split hidden. It still retains my array mesh properties. We're gonna go in here to transform stage two and we're going to delete it. So now these have an array mesh that just goes here. And then this one has an array mesh that has top and bottom, if that makes sense. And then on here, again, we can go back to here and we can say, you know what? This needs to be maybe moved out a little bit more. And there's like a little, this one will go on bolt too. So let's do this. Um, are those screws? Yeah, those are like hex bolts. Um, let's do a quick save. I'm gonna go in here, like Allen wrench bolts, I mean. Brush, I think under military. I could show you how to make this, but just for the sake of time here. Um, H-I-J-K-L-M. Nope, way over here, sorry. 
I can't find anything. Use your brain, Mike. Okay, military. Um, there we go. Boom, perfect. So we have this thing here. I mean, not. that's actually not perfect. Um, let's do this. BI brush insert um, model kit. Hit M. I'm going to use this fastener six here. And again, we have X symmetry turned on and array mesh. And when I pull this out, uh, that's essentially what I'm going for with this. So I'm going to go ahead and do another uh, split mass points. This will put it into its own sub tool here. Sh Shift D to turn that off. And then here, what we can do is we can say, I'm going to hold down Alt and mark all of these. Um, control Shift Tap, Control Shift Drag to invert, delete hidden. We're going to go in here and we're going to say close convex hole, Control Shift, Control W. And then, is that enough? Yeah. And then I want to, let me see if I can do this. Because um, I want to, uh, I can align, oh, you know what, turn off array mesh temporarily. You know what I could do? I could just brute force this. When in doubt, just like, just go move some stuff around. Don't get too fancy. I'm just going to move some points. We're going to call this good enough. Okay, so uh, we have this. I'm going to say uh, Q mesh. Let's hit W and then control tap this poly group here. And I'm going to hold down control and push this in. And then I'm going to hit uh, W and hold down Alt and just kind of squeeze L sim. Squeeze this in just a tiny bit. Um, and then what we can do is we can just run like a crease tolerance on here. And I'm going to manually go through here and say like crease edge on all these ones here, just to keep those a little bit flatter. And you know what? Uh, this bothers me slightly. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say uh, Q mesh flat island and just pull out a little bit of breathing room there and hit D for dynamic. I don't know, something like that. So go out of solo mode here. And again, we can turn the ray mesh back on so it shows up where it needs to. So now we have these bolts, which can be moved in just a tiny bit. And then we have these things, and then we have these things. And then let's go to this top hamburger meat here. Shift Z, bring our reference back. Yeah, we're doing okay. So really what I'm seeing here is this hamburger, let's hold down Alt and tap on the top here. Oops, or we can also hold down Control Alt and unmask. We've got to unmesh my center. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of breathing room. Oops. Sorry. Unmask mesh center. Uh, unmask. And then go in here and I'm going to say, again, give myself a little bit of breathing room. Oh, those bolts went to the top. Um, because what I would have had to have done on this here is instead of doing. Uh, just as pure offset, you would also want to do a Y mirror. Um, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'll, I'll fix that in a second. So, so here we give ourselves a little bit of breathing room on our hamburger. And then these things are going to be plugged into. And you know what? Let's do a little bit of work on this hamburger. I'm going to say poly group poly loop here. Inset. Uh, inset. <laughs> Polygroup ball legacy. I'm going to pull in just a little bit and then I'm going to say Q mesh polygroup ball and just hold down shift and kind of pull this out just a little bit here. Um, and again, we'll do like our insert single edge loop or you know what? Inset polygroup ball. We'll just kind of pull in here and on the bottom too uh, for now. And then when it comes to, and if we do need to scale this in again, you can hold down alt and just scale along that axis, axis if you need to. And then on this thing here, we're also going to duplicate this off. We're going to move this down just a bit. And really, I don't need this whole top piece here. So control shift drag, delete hidden, close convex hole. We'll just cap this here, control W and let's do a group by normals. And then we'll just do a Q mesh call your ball. All right, so we have our metal separator here. We'll thin that out just a tiny bit. And we'll scale it in just a bit. All right, so we'll say, uh, you know what? 
deleted. I'm going to take this one here because this one's kind of already working. I'm going to duplicate it off. I'm going to do a mirror in the Y and I'm just going to drop this down because that's it also has everything else kind of already built in. So Y reinvent the wheel here. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and weld these bars up. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that and we'll just do an array mesh of 12 after we get this all, all done and figured out. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take this here. I'm gonna hold down Shift, shoot it to the bottom, which it already is. I'm gonna Alt tap the bars here, Shift, shoot it to the bottom. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and turn off all the eyeballs. Oops, turn off all the eyeballs except for these two. And I'm going to weld these together. Um, I don't necessarily need array mesh for this because I know the array mesh settings that I want. So I'm gonna go down here. Um, I actually have array mesh on in my, um, over here. So uh, now what I can do is, yeah, okay, on this one, we'll take keep it array mesh. We'll go down here to geometry, uh, array mesh, We'll say make, we'll turn extrude off, just turn, hit make mesh here, make mesh, and then I don't need any of this other stuff, so I'm just going to say I only want you, delete hidden, and then this one, no array mesh, perfect. So now, again, we have, ah, those are really close, this might give us, I'm going to back these off just a tiny bit. Okay, so we have our objects here. I'm going to take, and, I'll, and again, you want to make sure you have polygroups where you want the geometry to be rebuilt. So we have polygroups on all sides. Uh, this one, I have polygroups on the side. They're going to weld these together. So with these two showing, there's actually a couple ways you can do this. Uh, we'll just keep doing what we were doing earlier. So um, with these showing, I'm going to go in here to live Boolean. There's a both additive. So we're going to say uh, dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. Go to our U mesh here. Let's do a quick save. And then, so we have this actually deleted I forgot um, on these ones here whenever you start doing uh, dynamic subdivisions on a long cylinder you want to make sure I'm going to do a quick um, group by normal geometry modified topology mirror and weld I'm going to do an inset polygroup ball and again just pull in some control loops here just to just to give that a, just to make sure you maintain those edges a little bit better so again D for dynamic uh, both these visible live boolean turned on make boolean mesh grab it and then i done messed up too because what i need to do with this one is i need these to all be one polygroup control w there we go so now we have polygroups where we want it oh come on z remesh you can do this so we have lines on here it's not very heavy uh, i just want to get better geometry than this stuff here so we have x symmetry turned on and in fact i bet we could turn on uh, again, L sim local symmetry on this axis of this bounding box of this object, X and Z, and you know what? Maybe even X, Y, and Z. Zero mesh, half a depth size down to zero. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Oh, not bad at all. I'll take that. Half, half. Yeah, actually really good. Uh, let's go in here. We'll do a quick, um, and I could I could extrude this out and maybe get a little bit cleaner on here, but honestly, I'm not going to sweat that. Um, let's see, uncrease all. Let's crease PG, and now I'm safe to do like you know crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two or three or whatever. And now all these things, these are kind of welded together. And if it's like you know what, these creases are just too crease, I want to back those off a little bit. Um, you don't necessarily have to use a crease. You can go down here. Oh, did it build in? It did. Okay, that's why. I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to say collapse poly loop, and I'm just going to collapse those. Uh, that's part of the reason why it stayed too sharp. So if I go back here and I hit D for dynamic, um, you get a little bit more of a fall off here. Uh, but if you want to exaggerate that just a little bit, and also we need a little bit of control loop on here, don't we? Let's do a quick inset poly group ball legacy. Give ourselves a little bit of breathing room around here. And let's go ahead and collapse these edges back. Collapse edge. You and you and you and you. And then delete. You and you. And then uh, here, perfect. And then we can now go in here and you can say like bevel here. Just 
kind of knock those back just a little bit here. And now when we hit D for dynamic, um, we have a little bit of control loop around there to soften that transition. And there we go. So now we have this. We're going to go back to our working object here. We don't need these anymore. Delete, delete. We still have our bolts, which is good. Uh, we need to flip those top ones though. And then we're going to say append this U mesh here. Now this U mesh, I am going to go back into array mesh here. So we're going to say U array mesh. And we're going to say again, uh, lock position, lock size, reset, uh, rotate in the Y amount 360 with 12 repeats. There we go. So now we've got our bars back in, they're all built together. And then for these things here, transform stage two, I'm going to delete and I'm going to say, okay, we've got our array mesh on these bolts. Let's do this right, if I can. We're gonna append new and we're going to say X mirror in the Y and I don't know where they, okay, they ended up here, that's okay. And then I'm going to append new, uh, turn on transpose hit W then Y to go into transpose. We're gonna go in the Y direction here and I'm gonna move these down. Whoa, oh no. Repeat of one maybe? Yeah, okay, just repeat of one is all I need. Or, or no, ah, uh, no, let's see, delete. Can I just move, okay, I can, okay, I'm stupid. Um, I, I can always do multiple offsets, I can mirror as an action and then I can also offset as an action in the same uh, transform stage, duh. Okay, so we've mirrored and now we're, got that there. Okay, we did it folks. So now this cheese is, you know, a little low res to me. So I'm gonna say, you know what, we already have a crease. So we'll say crease level of three, uh, smooth subdiv of four, uh, maybe crease level of two. Okay, there we go. Here, uh, this, 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 and this. Whew. Alrighty. Okay, back to the comments. Sorry about that. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see here. Sorry if I miss anything. Um, how to fight your own boredom when you're doing 3D stuff and enjoy the process. I, I don't know, 3D should be pretty fun. If 3D is, is if 3D is kind of a bummer, um, I don't know, try and find a project. Uh, oh, you know what, I messed up. Um, <laughs> these bars, they alternate top, bottom. So basically what I would do is go through here and do that process again where you mesh and then do a top one and then every other one I would flip. Uh, we'll, we'll get caught up with that in a second. Um, Okay, so if you only have one subtool and increase the visible count, you can drag the empty subtool one, two, three in the scroll bar, but I couldn't have that list length dynamic. So if you want only your subtools, you could always prepare your custom menu with all the empty subtools you can fit on your screen. You know what? It might take you a bit. It might take you a bit to do like, okay, you know what? I want 40 over here. So you just open this one up to 40, drag all 40 in your custom menu, put this one back to eight, and then you have your custom menu with 40 in there. Um, it'll take you a few minutes, but once you've done it once, um, yeah, give that a shot. Um, I am, <laughs> Samuel, calm down. Um, let's see, what would be easier to split point and extrude bars from the original block. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, give that a shot. Um, yes, making a burger. Uh, my scan is noise as well. There are millions of them out there. Um, first and so Oh boy. Um, cool. I'm doing good. Uh, gonna repeat my uh, If you grab army curb brush, for example, is there a way to apply noise? Oh, on the length of each spike chain part. Ooh. We kind of. Kind of not. Um, there's a, <laughs> this is gonna be hacky AF, but you can go in here to brush curve flat. If I understand, you can actually go through here and instead of using, so here's your curve. And then if you want to, you can say, oh, you don't wanna change that style. So BI brush insert army curve M, you know, put on a bike chain and now it's a bike chain. But if you wanna be like, oh, I wanna jiggle all these components of the bike chain, 
Um, I, there's no, I don't think there's a way to pass noise through a curve. However, what you could possibly do is back in this section here where you have a bunch of polygons, um, if we go in here and say split mass points, you can go in here and you could make that bike chain a micro poly. Uh, ooh. Let's do unweld all and then underneath, oh boy. Uh, these are brain busters. Uh, ask me easier questions like, um, what's my favorite breakfast? So we go in here and we say geometry. <laughs> Where the hell is everything? Uh, this is why I have my custom menu. Uh, geometry, dynamic, and then uh, smooth so down to zero, and then micro poly. And again, just put a bike chain in here. I'll put a scale in here for now. So now you have geometry controlling where these go. Um, as an or or instead of doing this, you could do a bike chain as an insert mesh brush. B I, um, I don't know whatever brush create nano mesh brush. Hover over a face. Insert nano mesh polygroup all. And so now you've got your bike chain on individual pieces of geometry as an instance. And then underneath your nano mesh here, you can say maybe fit. Let me see which one messes it up. Yeah, we don't want to do fit proportional. This should be fine. So now as these things move, you can introduce, um, in fact, you could, <laughs> you could go in here to dynamics and turn on like uh, self collision, gravity way down, no collision volume run simulation. This kind of, <laughs> and you don't have to, you can say show instances off. Or, sorry, show placement off. So now it looks like you have a, um, Now it looks like you have a uh, like a rigid body simulation. It'll you know if you had a collision volume, you would like bounce or be able to bounce these planes around it, and those planes are carrying geometry information. I don't know that that was all that helpful. Um, I don't have a great answer for that. I'm sorry. Um, stroke menu curve modifiers you control only how wide it can be. Oh, um, stroke menu curve fall off you can go thick to thin uh, if you do an intensity well in this case it would be size because it's not a stroke so it wouldn't be intensity um, cool uh, hmm real interesting interesting characters in the comments today all right so now we have all this in here. I'm going to hold down Alt and Tap and then hit Y and we're going to pull this star out here. So uh, let's fix these bars just real quick. So back here, we have our original U mesh here and we also have our undo history. So we can actually go back uh, all the way through here. No problemo. And yeah, good enough. So I'm going to take Alt E M. We're going to say cylinder 16 and I'm only going to do one. You know, it might be easier. I'm going to append a cylinder here. Cylinder 3D. E. Rotate. Scale it down. And we're going to move this forward. All right. So if I scale this down and move it in, uh, I'm just basically going to match. I guess I could um, just get this generally in the place correct ish so this would be here ish maybe that seems a little high I'm just gonna eyeball it okay so if I scale this in and push this into place you're like okay that's uh, not quite not quite as uh, thick as the other one so I'm gonna do a group by normals and then go in here and say Q mesh poly group ball and again just hold down shift um, I could also do the alt drag but I think that's fine. So we're gonna say crease PG, turn on dynamic, smooth div of two should be fine. So now we have these two. I'm gonna turn off transparency. I'm gonna merge these down. Uh, oh, damn, before I do that, split hidden. One real quick one, insert single edge loop just to control these edges a little bit more. And then also when I do dynamic, it doesn't actually apply it. So I'll make it real geo and then merge down. There we go. So now we have this. Let's hope it doesn't throw us for a loop here. And here's another thing too, since we merge these down, I 
can't go in here to Boolean because there is nothing to Boolean. However, I can hit W and I can go in here and I can say remesh by union. And that'll go ahead and, oh no. Oh, um, X symmetry turned off, W remesh by union. There we go. So now uh, we have this. And again, I just want to isolate these ones, control W. And I think there's a little hidden one up here too that we didn't catch the first time. There we go. So now we got this zero mesher, half, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Let's give it a shot. And again, we're just looking to weld this geometry. I mean, you could dynamesh, it's not a big deal. I just tend to, oh, you know what? We have, um, we don't have X symmetry turned on. So X symmetry turned on. Um, we don't want symmetry in the Y anymore because it's not symmetrical in the Y, but X and Z is probably fine. So there we go. And then again, just keep hitting half. Good enough. Good enough. Increase PG. Uh, keep groups. Uh, increase PG, increase level of, maybe say one, smooth so div of three. And then, yeah, we're still getting that kind of little divot down here. So just real quick, inset polygroup all uh, legacy. Let's do shifty. What's going on here? Oh, oh no. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, no big deal. We can fix that. And here, bridge two points U to U. Okay, that's all we need to do. Good. And then we'll go in here and we'll say collapse. Now that we have that, we can say inset. And now we can do a quick collapse edge. Again, we're just trying to put a little control loop here. And then we can say delete here and here. And if you do want to scoot these things around, you can go in here and you can say slide by brush radius. It's going to slide those along the surface there. OK, here. And then same thing for the bottom, since we couldn't do Y symmetry. Again, we'll do a quick, oops bridge u to u inset oops here's another bridge u to u collapse and you know what we'll collapse u too inset collapse blink 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 delete blink blink all right for dynamic good enough so now we have this and I'm going to append that you mesh and then one more time uh, this oop, these ones here I do want to keep these ones here I don't so I'm going to delete this out of here Ooh, this might get complicated I always got to give myself complicated stuff to do because if I want to switch every other one Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn off, I'm gonna do Shift D, uh, just to make sure we just have the plain Jane geometry here. I'm gonna do two versions of this. We're gonna go down here to, what are we doing on time? Okay, we still got three minutes. I'm gonna go down here to Array Mesh, and we're going to say, okay, Array Mesh, Lock Position, Lock Size, one more time, repeat of, we decided 12 was what we're looking for, rotating 360 degrees in the Y. Oops, reset, repeat. 12, 360 degrees, there we go. So that's one. So now if I go through here, I can say, you know what? Turn off extrude, make mesh. Now these are all real meshes. Um, damn, I didn't want to do that. Duplicate that off, go back to original, go back before you said, make this Not an array mesh. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make sure transpose is turned off. Yep. Hold down shift, turn off X symmetry, rotate this around so that they're on the bottom. And then now we can go in here and say make mesh. And now we have meshes that are top and meshes that are bottom. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say, I'm just going to, all I need to do is grab a little piece. So control shift alt U, 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 U. U, control shift drag, control shift A, control shift drag, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and then go out of solo, uh, let's stay in solo mode, or go out of solo mode, but just show these two. So now on this one, 
the exact opposite. So I have a good one here. So you are gone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Exometry turned off. So you are gone. You are gone. You're gone. Control shift A, control shift drag, change my fight topology. Delete hidden. Woo! There we go. And you know what? We can just merge these down. And now we can hit D for dynamic. Increase level of one, so we said of a three is fine. Turn everything else back on. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, yeah. So that's what everybody's talking about here is quick save. Um, you can go in here. You know what? We can even start simpler. Let's just go to Polymesh 3D. We can go down here to initialize. There's two ways. You can go down to initialize and you can just make a Q cube. You can also go in here and you can do like, I don't know, a uh, poly cube here. So we've got this going. I wish I could hit W to get out of there now. Yes, Gizmo 3D, please. Um, so here's our little little bar here. And in fact, I, I'm still going to turn on X symmetry here. Go in here, zero mesh, half, that size down to zero, detect edges just to get even quads. So um, yeah, let's do half one more time. All right, it's not going to cooperate. So we're going to go in here, insert single edge loop, and then we're going to put one right down the middle, uh, insert multiple edge loops here. Now, if you can set this up correctly, you can go in here to like uh, split point on here. And in fact, you can just go to the bottom here. You can say Q mesh, polygroup all just pull through, and now you've got a hole through it. Or in our case, what you want to do is split a point, W, control drag this up, rotate it around like so. And then you can go through and you can say, uh, delete polygroup all and then bridge two holes and then U to U and then uh, if you want to add a few more in here let's do insert multiple edge loops hold down alt and then put those in there let's go to uncrease all and like we did before we can still go through here and we can say bridge two connected polys and just round these out so um, and then we can just do uh, group by normals. Let's crank that max normal up so we can get these all in there. Um, just do it in mirror and weld across the x-axis. Uh, you may still need to go in here and do some cleanup work, but that's generally what you would do. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any gotchas there. Eh, I think you'd be okay. I think that'd be an okay workflow. And then just put your bolts on. Um, let's see, blah, 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 is there, um, uh, basic ZBrush, I want to learn ZBrush for characters, what's the first thing I have to practice? Uh, if you know ZBrush, then just, um, just practice making characters, just come up with a, or, you know, go find a concept or photograph and just use ZBrush to make it and then just make a bunch of them. Um, speed. <laughs> cool, everybody. All right, so we got 30 minutes left. So let's go back here to our mesh here. Now, this star here is kind of an, it's a kind of inset and beveled out. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, it's also wrapped to the underlying mesh. Not mesh, but you know what I mean. So we can do that as well. Uh, the only bad thing about wrapping this type of mesh is the geometry isn't going to be very forgiving with that um, with that polarized middle there. Let's see if we can do this. Zero mesh, double. Ugh. Oof. No, we can't. Um, hmm, let's try this. Let's go in here to insert single edge loop. Here. I'm just trying to get some geo in here so that we might be able to I'm using multiple edge loops. This is why it's doing that weird thing um, instead of single. Okay, zero mesh. Hmm. Well, we can try wrapping. Um, this might help. Okay, so let's go in here and let's say Q mesh polygroup ball. So if I Q mesh this out, it's just a straight extrude. It's not an inset. So let's do this first. Um, 
Now let's do this. Let's go to the back. <laughs> let's turn on display properties double. Let's go to the back and we'll queue mesh this out just a tiny bit. And then on the front here, I'm gonna go in here to inset polygroup ball and just kind of pull this in a little bit and then we'll queue mesh polygroup ball and then I'll hold down shift and kind of pull out. So that'll give us that kind of fall off here. You can adjust those corners as needed. Um, and now I'm gonna do a crease PG and then also just run a crease tolerance here. Uh, and you know what, let's do this. Let's hit control D to subdivide a couple. Nah, let's do this, okay. We're gonna go in here, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. Okay, okay. I'm starting to feel where this is going. Uh, insert single edge loop. And we're just gonna kind of pull these in just to kind of give us a few control loops on the corners here to maintain those just a bit. And that's gonna give us a bit of a fall off on the edges, but that's okay, because that's kind of what they have. Whoa. Something just happened, I just got rid of a bunch of my stuff. Eh, oh well. Uh, you know what, we can also mute my desktop audio, sorry about that. Okay, so we have this. Now how do we wrap this? There's a couple different ways you could wrap this. If I do it now, if I go in here and do like a bend arc, um, you can even do it like a matchmaker, I suppose, but you'd have to put a big cylinder back there. So if I do a bend arc now, um, oops, this one. Let's go into solo mode. Uh, I'll look for this one. So I go in here and do a bend arc and then change this bend radius. Um, see how it kind of does a poor job because there's just not enough geometry in there to support it. So what I was hoping is I could go through here and let's do shift D. Hmm, it's just those points are gonna cause problems, I bet. Let's try it. Uh, key group spookers down to zero, double. Accentry turned on. Hold down Alt, Alt Zero Mesh. It's not terrible, it's not terrible. I can work with that, I think. Let's also do this. Let's hit Control D to subdivide once, and then go down here. I just wanna look at the geometry, so I'm gonna do a quick delete lower. Zero Measure. This is where <laughs> zero meshing a star might have been better. It's easy enough to make a nice star uh, with all the points you want, but then if we want to go and make a star that's not quite so hectic, it might behoove us to go back to what we did at the very, very beginning. And um, basically what we did was go in here to alpha, grab a star mesh, go in here to create. Let's go ahead and make it double-sided. Let's crank that res up, maybe 256. Make 3D. Uh, oh, load the alpha up, make 3D, there we go. Control shift, let's go ahead and grab that knife curve. And I'm just gonna take this part off and this part off here. And then geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X, X symmetry turned on, zero mesher, depth size down quite a bit, keep group, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh, and then half. You know, and this is okay, honestly, because what I can do now is I can say, okay, this is good enough. Let me help this out just a tiny bit. Hang in there, everybody. Half. Ooh, it starts getting crazy. Let's say delete hidden. Let's go in here to Q mesh polygroup ball. I'm gonna pull this back, display properties flip. Um, oops, let's push that forward just a little bit. So we got a little bit of the back there and then I'm gonna try to do a Q mesh polygroup ball just to kind of round this out just a bit and then Q mesh polygroup group, I'll hold down shift. So we got our thickness back, we have a back here and we have a star. And then now with this star that has decent geometry, not decent, but like, you know what I mean? Better than just a polarized geometry. Go in here, crease PG. And then now when I go through here and I wanna bend arc this one, there we go. See that much nicer, more controlled result. So here's what we're gonna do, uh, B, Create insert mesh, new, quick save. Go back here, go out of solo mode. We have X symmetry turned on. Let's go make sure we have our star mesh selected and you are just gonna get replaced. There we go. And then I'm gonna do a visibility hide point. 
It's under your visibility menu underneath geometry, and then control shift drag. Geometry modify topology delete hidden. So now we have a star that we can bend to our will. So let me go back. Oh yeah. I did something really bizarre with my reference. What the hell? Hold on. Yeah, I hit Q twice in a row, and all of a sudden my reference just bounced to the top of my screen. What a pain. I wonder if that's like a Windows thing or a Quadro thing. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Anyway. Cool, John Yu. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I think we adjust the brushes to have a brush stroke that starts small, then medium, large, and ends small. Uh, pressure sensitivity. You can also, um, if you want it to be attached to a curve, oh, what brush is that? If we take this here and we duplicate it off, control D a bunch of times, and then, uh, what was it, like brush? I guess deco could work. There's also, um, oh, I forget the name of it. It's recent. Extrude profile, or that's geometry. Um, displace curve, deco curve, drag, maybe it was this. So you can go through here and you can have a curve on a surface. Oops. You can have a curve on a surface. And then, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I guess it still would be controlled by here in your intensity curve fall off. You want to go from big to small to large to small. Um, maybe this size. Something's tickling my brain. There's something. Let's go in here too. It's like a, it's like a recent thing. Okay, there we go. So now you can see it goes from like small to large to small. <sighs> what was it? ZBrush 20, was it a 2022 or 2021.7? Stroke and turtle, dual action brushes. Scribe chisel. I think that's what I'm talking about. Scribe chisel. The S. There we go. Scribe standard, scribe chisel. So if I put this in. Uh, these ones are cool because you can go Z sub to Z add and it'll just update on the fly. So we'll keep this at Z sub and then you can even extend this back out. So like we have, we have a curve fall off here. It goes small to big to small. Um, if we tap to update, you'll see that's the result you'll get. So, and I, you may be even able to do a strength multiplier. I'm not sure, but that's one way to do it. So it's attached to a curve and it can go small, big, small, depending on if we reset this and drag this out, it's going to go small to big. We can flip horizontal, big to small, or like we had super small, super big, super small. There you go. Something like that. Um, I'm going to use projection strength instead of bent arc to make it fit the surface. Just because, uh, so we delete that out of our scene here. Uh, the surface underneath, uh, I do agree. Like if you, if I was to put out, if I want to put a star down here, which I do actually, let's go ahead and do it. So see how we have a star down there with eyeballs on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So for example, if I want to, instead of using bend arc, uh, cause the only reason I wouldn't do that on here is just because it's kind of overlapping multiple areas. Like I'm going to have to figure out that depth and probably pull this back and make this fit a little bit better for that star. However, uh, what I'm going to do is on this one down here, let's go ahead. I'm going to duplicate this cylinder off. Yeah, we'll go ahead and say crease, turn on dynamic, apply, delete lower. Uh, and then we go back to our star mesh here that we made, insert mesh star. And then let me see if I can't see this a little bit better. Okay, there it is right there to the right. Perfect. So I want my star to go onto the cylinder, right? Uh, so when I drag this out, it's just going to be flat. However, underneath brush here, let's hit R to clear that out. Uh, strength multiplier, we'll keep it one. We want to do projection strength. So now it's going to project to that underlying surface as it wraps. So we can hit W and kind of move this around and then do a quick split mass points. Uh, this one I don't actually need, so I can just delete it out of my scene there. 
and then we'll turn everything else on, back on. And there we go. So now that star is wrapped uh, to that uh, underlying cylinder. And that also looks like he has some buttons, which we could do the same thing. Um, and this one actually might actually have something we can use. I'm going to go in here to model kit, hit M. And I want to say like these fasteners and also maybe like just a cylinder. I mean, I guess we could make one real quick. Um, let's do a quick save. Let's go out of edit mode real quick. Real quick. Everything's real quick. We got this one. We're going to go down here. Oh, look, we can do this again too. Instead of just a cylinder 3D, we can do a poly cylinder. So now we get uh, this kind of end, which will deform maybe a little bit better. Um, let's get rid of those here. Say thank you very much. And this is our button that we want. B, create insert mesh, new, go back down here. Um, and then, yeah, anything you put this on, it'll go ahead and wrap to that surface as well. Um, in which case, and again, I kind of want to keep this geometry nice because I'm going to use it later. So I'm going to go ahead and just do another, you know, crease, dynamic, apply, hide the original, shift Z, bring this back, and then... I can't see good. Okay, there's this button. Button's right there. And then X symmetry turned on. Drag this out. Oops. Insert mesh geometry, delete lower. And as we drag this out again, we want to make sure that projection strength is up. And then now, yoink. Uh, this one we can do a hide point. Control shift drag, delete hidden. And then turn everything else back on. There we go. And then we could put little bolts on there or whatever. Um, how can we do it with pressure sensitivity and clay brush? Um, if I'm understanding correctly, it should just be pressure sensitivity, right? Solo. So we have a clay brush. I'm going to crank that intensity up so we can see what we're doing. So we have a clay brush and we want to go small to big to small. Um, there is a thing under here you can also do that would be, um, God, what was it called? Oh, we're having to dig back deep in my brain. Uh, magnify, which is that an alpha and texture? Yeah, magnify curve. So here's, uh, wait, yeah, magnify. Uh, small to thick. Um, you can also turn on lazy mouse. If I get you a little bit of a smoother transition. Um, is this even magnify though? What happened here? Magnify curve. Low magnify of one. High magnify. We'll switch this to like three. So now when I do this, it might give you a different effect. This one, for some reason, I remember it with chisel creature maybe doing it with scale. So now with this one, we have high magnify set to three. So if we set this to a dot stroke, uh, small to large to small, um, and that's with magnify on. And then if we put this back down to one, which is the default, then we go small to large to small. Um, it just magnify kind of bloats as it goes and then non-magnify kind of I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for um, okay and uh, cool excellent all right so let me go ahead and we'll delete that out of our scene go out of solo mode here and we'll just keep moving right along so shift Z bring this uh oh move this back and I guess really, uh, we have this hamburger meat ready to go. I think it's in good shape. Um, there's a couple pickles we need to add, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. And I'm just gonna check this geometry out because again, this does need to kind of inset just a bit. So we're gonna go back down here. We're gonna say inset polygroup all. I'm gonna pull this in on both sides and then control alt W. I'm gonna make sure we're right there in the middle go out of solo mode, and I'm just going to match that draft from our underlying mesh there. Good enough. 
Okay, so now that we have this, I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna say, let's make this a little bit nicer. Insert multiple edge loops here, and then just tap on the bottom to match that. And you know what? We'll put some more geometry in here just in case. I'll do a quick crease PG, crease level of three, smooth div of four. Um, and I'm not too worried about this because this is gonna be organic, so I can go through and smooth this as needed. So I'm just gonna say, you know what? Let's go ahead and say, apply this. Um, we have X symmetry turned on while we're just kind of messing around. And then I'm just gonna go through here and kind of smooth this out. So there's our Burger Geo. Now it does have noise through it. Um, I can use a noise brush or I can go down here to surface noise and see if I can't get a good start on this. So surface noise, zoom in a little bit here. We're gonna change that noise scale quite a bit. Uh, strength, maybe down. And I'm not gonna apply it just yet. I'm just gonna try to dial in, make, make this a little more knobby. Something like this. So I say, okay. And then now I need uh, to apply this to my mesh. If I just go in here and apply to mesh, it will do it. Um, however, before I do that, I'm gonna subdivide one more time. I'm gonna go down here to, we could do, I'm gonna keep play it safe. There is a uh, just last, which I can use, but I'm gonna go in here to layers, add a new layer. And then I'm recording on this layer. So when I go in here and I'm gonna say instead mask by noise and then control tap to invert that, I can even go in here and turn the mask off temporarily, or not turn it off, but turn off the visibility and then just inflate through um, to get to what I want. And if I'm like, okay, I'm okay with this, uh, then I can turn off record and now I have this on a layer. So if I want to, I can be like, ah, you know what, it's too much. Or I want it to actually go in, uh, which isn't a bad look. And I can even over crank it down here. So you can just kind of over crank that burger look, I think. I think I like the in a little better here, and I think that'll be okay. Um, and then on top of this, if we're cool with this, I'm gonna say bake all, and then you can go in here manually with like your clay brush and stuff, and uh, let's turn off L sim, or sorry, lazy mouse with L, and do whatever you want to for that. So that's that, and then uh, beep, beep, beep. what else? Okay, sesame seeds. Let's drop on some sesame seeds. Okay, it's just doing some weird stuff. So uh, on here, uh, we have a head and I haven't done the face yet, but uh, we can talk a little bit about NanoMesh. So I'm gonna duplicate this off here. So duplicate this. Again, we're gonna say, hmm, we don't need any poly groups on here. I'm just gonna put in some bevel. So bevel edge loop complete here and maybe to put a small bevel here and then maybe an inset island here. And I could Z remesh this. I don't care too much about this cap, although I do want to make sure that it's not visible. Okay, it's far enough up there. We're okay. So again, control W, we have our burger bun that we want to um, maybe sculpt on and maybe do some, although this does come down a little bit. Okay, that's fine. So shift Z, bring this back. Um, so in my sculpt, I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna hit control D to subdivide and we can just start modifying this a bit. It does look like this comes down just a tiny bit in the middle, and then we can start like sculpting face and adding features. However, um, since we don't have a ton of time left, just got a few minutes, go through there, sculpt the face, but another thing you can do once you're done with that, and again, I'm gonna duplicate this off one more time. Um, eh, you know what, let's do it. Let's go in here, we have this here, and I have nice geometry, but I'm gonna be adding a bunch of stuff to it, like, you know, a cylinder, down the middle, so let's go in here and let's say delete lower, so I can just add a cylinder here and uh, close enough, and then maybe we want to add. I mean, on this, on these cheeks here, we don't necessarily. I'm just going to dynamesh this all together. There we go. And if we want to round this out, just trim dynamic along here, smooth here, and then you could add. Uh, primitives in here you can just go in here and like you know add a sphere here and add a sphere here and scale these down and plop them in there if you want to uh, or you can just you know boy that looks bad or you can just go in here with your clay brush and maybe use clay build up and just uh, you know add a nostril here on the side and then also on the cheeks and if you want to you can also paint on here so I'm going to go into standard brush RGB uh, or you can do BPA for your paintbrush, and then we need to go in here to brush samples and turn on spotlight projection. We'll hit Control D, and then we'll go through here, and we'll say Z add off RGB turned on. We can literally just paint, you know, where my features are supposed to go. Uh, and I need a little bit more reference 
here? I mean, I guess that's just what that looks like. Hmm. Maybe that's why they got rid of them. Too suggestive. Uh, so we'll go through here. And then for the eyeballs themselves, those are just kind of pods. Um, and I don't know. I like to keep things... Let's go in here and say delete lower. Sometimes it's easier just to kind of mess around with uh, geometry instead of going through and sculpting. It's just to kind of... Oh gosh. Just to kind of get these things settled into place here. Yeah, that's about right. And then, yeah, same thing for the cheeks, which are on either side. You can go through here, and again, you can just use your clay brush, I suppose. Oh, another one, another interesting one. If you hit the comma key, go in here to brush miscellaneous. Um, hmm. Miscellaneous. There is a spherical. So if you use this, you can actually like brush out like a sphere if you just keep doing it. Um, you can also use it to kind of just pump up the jam a little bit in that direction. Um, we're also getting indications of where the lips need to go. So we can go in here with our trim dynamic, go into solo mode here, and we can just kind of trim this lip shape back. And then also go in here with our move brush or move accu brush maybe. Just kind of pull this down and then pull this around. Looks like it kind of go in here and move a little bit too. In this one, I'm going to crank up my resolution a bit, go through and dynamesh this, and then kind of smooth this result out. Again, we can z-remesh this to our heart's content here. But I think, let's see, everything on, this off, maybe smooth a little bit here. Oof, looks like we got a small problem on here. Not a huge deal. Let's go in here to inflate and then re-dynamesh. There we go. So we've got everything kind of going. And let's go in here with our trim dynamic. And I'm going to kind of just do a quick pass on here, maybe with a little bit of H polish as well. Smooth. OK. And then nostrils, we go in here with our Damien standard. Maybe kind of pull up in here a little bit. And then maybe along the side here, maybe Damien standard 02. Kind of pop in a little bit of separation in there. I cannot seem to get much reference on here. I'm going to do a little artistic license on here. Let's take this Z intensity back down to 50. It's intense. I'm just going to go through here and just kind of build this side up just a tiny bit more. And it seems like, oh my god, did they all have, or did somebody just go through every McDonald's and just beat the nose? <laughs> uh, with a with an object there. Oh, I guess this one doesn't. Okay. All right. Oops. I want that back. Not that. Uh, I guess it's fine. Okay. So we've got D for Damien Standard. At least on my hotkeys here. So we have a head that we can z remesh and project our details back to uh, that I think will work pretty good. We can even add polygroups on there. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, now, what I am going to do though, well, you know what? I guess we can z remesh this. So we're going to say, oh, we need eyebrows first though. like there's honestly I, maybe for these things I probably would continue to use primitives just so you don't have to do so much sculpting and cleanup just because it does look like there is a pretty decent separation between um, the mold there same thing around the eyes but I think we're okay so again uh, this is just dynamesh and I want decent geometry right so what I can do is I can control let's do this let's go in here to Edit, delete older undo history. I'm going to control tap this point in history. You don't have to do that second part, but just for my purposes, I'm doing it. Uh, we're going to knife curve the bottom here. 
just to give me a polygroup here. And then um, just, for, just for some certain areas where I want geometry, I'm gonna do select lasso. Again, I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna worry about it, but I can't help myself. I just have to go through here and say, give me a polygroup. Give me a polygroup. Control W. I could polygroup these things too. Ah, I probably should. Ugh. Okay. Give me a second, because I can I can also go and increase those later. So here and here and here. Give me a polygroup as well. And on this one, let's go down here to uh, geometry edge loop mass border. We'll slice a polygroup on here, and heck, even this might be nice if I go through here and just I'm gonna trim dynamic this back just a bit. I'm gonna say isolate, control shift tap, mask. Uh, control W. Now some of these might be kind of aliased. Uh, you can go in here and hold down shift to smooth and change your settings so that, or grab a smooth brush uh, to go through and smooth these out. Um, shoot. Auto groups, mirror and weld, both of these, control W. Um, but you can also just really quickly what I'm gonna do, because again, I have those points stored in history that I'm gonna project back to. Actually, I'm gonna switch that. These are the points in history I wanna project back to. Uh, and then I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna do just a real quick masking, mask my poly groups, control tap to invert that, go to deformation, polish by features, just open circle, uh, crank that a couple times just to smooth my polygroup borders out. And then again, we put our line back on. We're at 611,000 polygons. That's way too much. So uh, we're going to go in here and say group. I uh, know we're going to go in here and say Z remesh. Uh, target polygon kind of five is probably fine. Adapt the size down quite a bit. Keep group smooth groups down to zero because they're already smooth. And I'm going to get some new geo. And then from this new geo, we're going to project our details back and then give ourselves a little bit more wiggle room when we want to go through and detail this up later. Um, uh, for noise and harsher smiles, I know sometimes the noise tends to pixelate even in the millions. That'd be a geometry problem or noise alpha issue. If your noise alpha is, ooh, looks like five is a little, uh, a little low. So I'm gonna crank this up just a little bit first. Um, it might be an alpha issue. If your alphas are like 8-bit, not 16-bit, you can end up with some subpar alphas. There we go, that'll work. So we have all our polygroups here. Now we need to project our detail back. I'm not in love with these lips here. Let's see if I can't bridge, bridge two points here to here and then collapse these back. There we go. So. I think we're good. So what we're gonna do is we have our points stored in history here. So I'm gonna go and do a project history, which is under your subtool project menu. I don't know, we opened a bunch of stuff. You know where stuff is, right? Subtool project history, and then uh, control D to subdivide, and then do a project history, and then control D to subdivide, project history. And I think we've got all our detail back and we have new UVs or we have new geometry that we can put UVs on if we want to. And the other cool thing is once we're done with all this, we don't need this original burger thing anymore. So we can just delete that ever seen. Um, we can now, I'm gonna duplicate this off, go down here to subdivision level one, delete higher. And now we wanna scatter um, sesame seeds, but we don't wanna scatter sesame seeds on his eyeballs or on his lips or on the bottom there. So we're gonna delete all those. We're gonna say delete hidden, and then let's do a quick save. Um, if you have geometry that's stored in history you don't want anymore, control tap the latest, control tap again, that'll get rid of it. And then we can go in here to Sphere 3D. Let's drop this down to like um, eight and eight. Make polymesh 3D scale. point, that kind of sesame seed shape, D for dynamic, close enough, 
looks like it. it looks like these sesames are actually pretty intense they're they're pretty bulbous so i'm going to scale these out a little bit i can do that in nano mesh too anyway b uh create insert mesh new brush create nano mesh brush back to our surface here now normally what i would do is like even try to simplify this and if it's going to go everywhere i can go in here uh, i mean i can keep groups and like zero mesh half and just keep making this lower um and then or i can hit Control w make it all one poly group or you can go in here again with your new nano mesh brush that has your seed uh, sesame seed loaded in hover over a face insert nano mesh on not on poly group all but all polygons actually no sesame seeds on his nose um insert nano mesh all polygons so we can go through here and we can just start adding um sesame seed but i don't need a sesame seed on every single face so i'm going to go down here to nano mesh nano mesh here and instead of show lens and show placement uh so we have random distribution on here so if i click on these that'll start randomly distributing them um, but they also need to be quite a bit bigger so i'm going to go in here and scale this out shift c put this back on here and i'm going to crank this up so I'm looking for density here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven from top to bottom is a good count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ugh, let's make them a little bigger. And this is kind of more of an eyeball-y thing, I think. And honestly, you could also make an insert mesh brush with projection strength, which we did earlier. You can go back to that section and you can literally just manually place them as well. This is always kind of fun to do though. So let's say, okay, this is fine. Um, I'm going to go in here to inventory one to mesh, control shift tap the purple, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. Actually, we can even go in here doing auto groups. So if there's any that are kind of like, eh, you're a little, you're a little close together. Um, you can go through here and you can kind of move these things around. Um, also, these are actually, oh, you know what we should have done? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it right. Didn't even think about it. Um, let's go back. Before we did one to mesh. So we're you know, over here and we're playing around with our nano meshes. Um, if we go back down here to our nano mesh properties. Uh, so we have a Z rotation where they kind of rotate freely. Let's do some Z variants. So they kind of have a bunch of stuff. You don't want to necessarily do like X rotation where they're flipping up from the surface, uh, but I think Z is a pretty good bet. And also you can change the, maybe a slight variance in the width and the length and the height just to kind of, I don't know, get a little something going on there. Uh, one to mesh. And then now we have a little bit more scattering. Um, there we go. Uh, you can also hit W and control tap any of these and kind of move them independently or go into your move brush with a draw size of one. Oops. And if you have, oops. So move brush with the draw size of one with move topological turned on. Oh boy, I got too much stuff open. Here, 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 here. Auto masking, topological. You can go through and you can move these individually just kind of really quickly. Um, or you can use move, a really large move brush with mask by polygroups up to 100. You can go through and just kind of squiggle these things around. Something like that. All righty. I think we're done here. Um, cool. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to head out. And uh, we'll be streaming... So this is Tuesday, right? So I'll be streaming on my channel on Thursday, uh, again, in case you missed it, or in case you want to, you know, catch up on, um, it'll be here, or on my Twitch, uh, but also it has the intro to ZBrush stuff, ZBrush What's New, eh, there's a bunch of stuff on here, and then also on the RStation page, this might be a little easier to look at, so here's that intro to ZBrush, here's What's New, here's some live, live streams we've done in the past, some extra curricular activities, Houdini stuff, and all sorts of weird stuff in there, Substance Painter and stuff, so you can check those out. Um, I don't know. There might be something interesting in there for you to follow along and do some cool stuff. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I will catch you on the flip side.